New York City's crawling with criminals. You have to watch your back everywhere. The 10 million illegals who have come into this country on Joe Biden's watch. I had a friend the other day tell me she was standing at a food truck. Two gentlemen uh, approached her. One had tattoos all over his face. They looked like illegals, she said. Joe Biden has made us a third world country. Never in the history of this country have I seen people, especially in New York City, living the way they're living now, where the illegals are coming here, we're greeting them on buses, we're flying them in, they give us this false, you know, I have to, I'm being persecuted, give me asylum. We shake their hand, we give them a goodie bag. We got, we drove from, on Sunday morning, we drove from Philadelphia area from that rally on Saturday night to New York City and I spent the day yesterday exploring, uh, you know, the this, this, this city and kind of staying around this area for the most part. I got to say, I, I, I thought I would see more homeless situation here. I thought I would see a little bit more chaos on the streets uh, than what, you know, the, from what I've been told. And I didn't see as much as I thought I would. So I am shocked, shocked. Well, not that shocked. No. So you're telling me the streets of New York aren't free flowing with trash and awash with violent migrant criminals like Fox News would have you believe? We give them a goodie bag. They come in, they take a goodie bag, and they steal everything they can from CVS. They beat up the employees at Target and at uh, Macy's. Then they assault the police, resist arrest. There's a trail of destruction, economic devastation. Last year, Bra Bragg downgraded 60% of felonies in New York City. New York City is also made up of five boroughs. Each borough has its own district attorney. Manhattan, Alvin Bragg, Brooklyn, Eric Gonzalez, Queens, Melinda Katz, The Bronx, Darcel Clark, Staten Island, Michael McMahon. The population of Manhattan is 1.6 million. The population of New York City is 8.3 million. That leaves about 6.7 million people in the other boroughs. Brooklyn has the most crime, followed by the Bronx. Alvin Bragg is only in charge of Manhattan. For the most part, if a criminal commits a crime in Brooklyn, they will be prosecuted in Brooklyn. Bragg does not have jurisdiction over the other district attorneys. I also think it's important to applaud where we've been. At the beginning of the pandemic, we saw a skyrocket in crime. All across the country, what we're seeing now, according to the FBI, is a decrease in crime, right? Violent crime has decreased 8% nationwide. Property crime has increased, decreased 6.3% in Chicago. Fatal shootings have decreased 16%. Homicides have decreased 13%. It ran in, out of victims. In St. Louis and Baltimore, we've seen fewer murders. In near, we've seen the fewest murders in the past decade. Detroit has had the least amount of murders since 1966. These are good things, and we should applaud that. And now it's on what can we do to make sure that people aren't stealing from the Walgreens and stealing from the CVS. But it's important to applaud the policies that are working to decrease many of these crimes that are already happening. And in Chicago, what you're seeing is there's peace agreements between gangs, you're seeing access to more resources in communities of color where we're seeing high levels of crime to decrease folks getting into crime to begin with. What and all of those things are steps are in the working? right direction. What are the policies that are working? Are you talking about more policing? No, well, in, 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 in some places, what you're seeing in Chicago, they're opening 24-hour rec centers so you, young people have some place to go instead of going to violent crime. You're also seeing them creating more resources in schools, right? So you can talk to a guidance counselor, you can talk to a social worker about what's happening in your home instead of having to resort to a gang or sheriff do you know if within the last year between 2022 and 2023 if there was an increase or decrease in murder and negligent homicide in tarrant county i don't have the numbers in front of me but, uh -huh. it, but it did not increase okay in fact it went down by almost 17 percent. so great job um what about manslaughter by negligence or we call it criminally negligent homicide I believe it also went down. Yes. In, in past, it may be on ticking up at, at the moment on uh, intoxicated and homicide may be ticking up at the moment in 24. Okay. Well, we had a 56.52% decrease. How about rape? All those categories we believe went down. Absolutely. And I do credit a lot of incredible law enforcement and municipal police chiefs. Awesome. So there actually was a decrease by 3.35% in rape. Robbery went down 4.5% and both aggravated and simple assault went 
collectively down by 3.18% and theft went down by 3.89%. This is at the same time in which we're talking about the migrant community and stoking these fears that they're bringing all of this trauma and this crime and violence to our communities. But when we look at a Texas community, Tarrant County, actually everything has gone down. And I do want to thank you for your service in that way because it takes a team. It can't just be one thing. It means we've got to have great law enforcement, but we also have to have really good policies. And we honestly need to be honest about the data that we see. So overall, it shows me that sheriff in Tarrant County, um, all crime was down, is what I can tell from the numbers. Color me shocked. I got to say, I, I, I thought I would see more homeless situation here. I thought I would see a little bit more chaos on the streets uh, than what, you know, than, from what I've been told. And I didn't see as much as I thought I would, so. The fact that this reporter believes the lies of his own echo chamber shouldn't be surprising, but it is, because we all know, and we've known for years, that there's lies in this echo chamber. If you remember, during the discovery of the Dominion lawsuit where Fox had to pay nearly a billion dollars because of their election lies that they did on air and convinced so many Americans of Trump's lie that the election was stolen, we found out that their own anchors didn't believe their lies. We saw Tucker Carlson say, quote, Sidney Powell is lying, by the way. I caught her. It's insane. And he wrote that to Laura Ingram, who responded, quote, Sydney is a complete nut. No one will work with her. Ditto with Rudy, end quote. And then Tucker responds, our viewers are good people and they believe it, but they didn't as it to the anchors and evidently some of these other reporters in their echo chamber didn't get the memo that guess what they're being lied to so here he comes to new york and is surprised that this is actually a thriving city and not what fox news says over and over and over that it is failing and of course the other lie in the circle of echo chamber beyond the fact that new york city is actually thriving is that migrants are somehow a harm disservice or a drain on our country when actually the facts and the research shows otherwise a nonprofit showed that immigrants paid over 500 billion dollars in taxes in 2021 alone. Now, 22% of all U.S. entrepreneurs are immigrants. If you break that down by state, in New York alone, immigrants paid $61 billion in taxes that year, and they have a spending power in New York alone of $133 billion. And in New York State alone, there are 289,506 immigrant entrepreneurs. And in Texas, where the governor is doing everything he can to make migrant crossing extremely dangerous, and the rhetoric, the hateful rhetoric of being so unwelcoming to immigrants and migrants. In Texas alone, in that one year, immigrants paid $45 billion in taxes. They had a spending power of $142 billion. And the number of immigrant entrepreneurs was 437,285. In Texas alone, that is their huge contribution to the economy. And you can see all this research and you can see all this data. But I also know from personal experience Experience because I am the proud daughter of an immigrant who ended up coming to this country, getting his PhD, and being a lifelong public servant. And all of my family members, there's tons who were those entrepreneurs and went on to professional degrees. But it is people like me and my family that this hateful rhetoric in the GOP circles are making people afraid of certain cities that are welcoming to immigrants and migrants and making people afraid of those same immigrants and migrants that contribute to our society and economic and so many other important ways. Uh, and we, we realize many of you are dealing with homeless encampments in your cities and towns. But we're providing $8 billion to allow you to provide alternatives to move on how people Build, build, build. That's how we bring housing costs down for good. Folks, at the same time, America deserves the freedom to be safe from crime. And America is safer today than when I took office. 
started the American Rescue Plan and made the biggest investment in public safety effort. And you used it well. You, all of you, have done a tremendous job in your community putting those resources to work. Using federal money to hire more officers, perfectible, accountable community policing, expanding violence intervention programs to help prevent crime. Folks, we don't always hear about it, but today's violent crime rates are down nationwide, nearly every major category. We're on the lowest levels in over 50 years. It's important to do. Serious problem. It's a two-man race. There's only two people in this race who can get to 270 electoral votes. Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Joe Biden stands for the middle class. Joe Biden has uh, built up our economy. Under Joe Biden's leadership, crime has um, gone down 10% over the last several years. He is an extraordinary leader. He cares deeply. He shares my family's values. We need every single person to vote and vote for Joe Biden. If everyone who can vote goes out and votes, Joe Biden wins. Real quick, Meta just changed their algorithm to suppress political content. Please follow our Instagram at Midas Touch right now as we head towards 400,000 followers so you don't miss a beat.